Oh my god. The PC port of this game freezes every time I tab out, so I can't take any notes on my PC while playing it, or I gotta restart the entire level after having to close the game. That's a great start. Hello, I'm under the mayo, mayo to my friends, and that moron to my enemies. So I'm going through the DMC series, I really enjoyed DMC 1, I did a video on it, good game. It has its flaws, it's a really old game at this point, but I liked it. Good challenge, good levels, good enemies. And for years, people have warned me about DMC 2, it's supposed to be terrible. I never looked into why, it's just what I heard. But you know what, I wanted to come to this game with an open mind, maybe I'll be surprised. Well, I'm fucking shocked. I had no idea it could be this bad. DMC2 is a game that is so bad it's baffling. As I played it, I was thinking, is this game even finished? The first thing that's completely screwed is the lock-on system. They've taken out the delayed input combos of DMC1, replacing them with combos that change depending on the direction you're pressing, like, for example, attacking two times and then holding forward and attacking again. It changes the combo. You can change a lot of combos in the middle by pressing different directions. On its face, this seems like a cool addition. However, like in DMC1, you can also hold lock on and press forward or back plus attack to do different special moves, like stinger or air launcher. This means you're unable to do directional input based combos while holding the lock on button. It's an incomprehensible oversight. It's frustrating because I really like being able to change combos like this. It's insane how they could design it this way so that you can't do these combos while locked on. But really, who cares about combos anyway? The challenge found in DMC1 is completely absent in DMC2. The AI is just standing there, waiting for me to attack. They rarely ever hurt me, sometimes they just run circles around me while I shoot at them. It's a joke. It's been 14 missions and I haven't died a single time, without a single use of a healing potion. On more than one occasion, I beat a boss literally by standing still and just holding square. What the fuck? And some of these bosses are only beatable by constantly shooting at them because they sit so far from you. The level 5 tank bosses can't even do anything to me when I'm up close, so I just mindlessly hacked away until they died. And there's three of these, followed by a helicopter that you can only shoot at. It's awful. This boss got stuck on the geometry and it was game over. Oh my god. Aside from the boss fights, the level design is at times atrocious, and the environments are dull and uninspired and empty. The cool castle of DMC1 has been traded for empty city streets and skyscrapers with no interesting bits of exploration, no meaningful sense of backtracking, and enemy encounters that can largely be ignored. The camera system is definitely worse than DMC1. You still get the same problems where enemies can be off screen, but it's 10 times as bad. As you're fighting flying enemies, shooting your guns in the air at who knows what because you can't see. The helicopter boss is too high to see half the time, and this giant moth or whatever it is floats so high up that you can't attack it with your sword. You just gotta shoot it when you can actually see it, and then rage every time you're targeting auto switches to the infinitely spawning worms on the ground. The cutscenes are unimpressive, Dante is far more boring and silent than he used to be. The playful humor of DMC1 that was mixed into the serious action is so toned down it's essentially non-existent. And the upgrade system is… terrible. In the last game, you could upgrade your sword by getting new moves. Now it just upgrades to the next level, whatever that means. I guess it's damage? But it feels really unsatisfying to dump red orbs into upgrading because there's no feedback. All sense of progression has been stripped out. You're not gaining any new tools to play around with other than guns. But the pistols are already so insanely powerful that a lot of fights are winnable by just standing back and holding the fire button. <laughs> Honestly, I'm confused. 
I don't know the history of DMC development, I'm a casual fan. But I gotta know, how does a game end up being this bad? Was it actually an unfinished product? Even if it is unfinished, that doesn't explain how bad the level design is. Well, I looked into it, and by that I mean I watched the Sphere Hunters video on DMC2, and the story is that DMC2 was given to an unknown director instead of using the director of the original game. They started going in some bad directions and listened to a bunch of player surveys complaining about DMC1's difficulty, which led to DMC2 becoming way too easy. And then four months before release, the project was given to another director with more experience and he did his best to fix the giant mess he was given. Okay, that makes a lot of sense given what I've just experienced. So this is a universally agreed on bad game, I see that. Fans of the series know it's bad, so I don't see much point in going into a 20 minute analysis of its failures 20 years after the fact. But it does leave me with a question. Why does everyone hate how easy this game is? Because in my interactions with fans of DMC, Ultra Kill, Bayonetta, and other games that create communities of people obsessed with style meters and ranking systems and combos, I constantly hear that it's the player's fault if they're bored. On this channel, I have regularly criticized style meter games for being poorly balanced with terrible AI and just being easy to mash through mindlessly without the game pushing you into playing more intelligently and more stylishly to survive. I have heard that this isn't a problem, because the point of these games isn't for them to be challenging, the point is for you to go in and experiment and find fun stuff to do. You don't need to be punished by the game for playing in a boring way. That's supposedly a childish way to think. It's my fault for picking the boring option. I'm sorry to bring up the Ultra Kill fiasco again, but why is it that when I say the starting pistol of Ultra Kill is already so powerful that there's no need to use other weapons for most of Act 1, that's controversial, but every video I see criticizing DMC2 talks about how the pistols are way too powerful and they trivialize the combat. Um, well then just don't use the pistols, right? That's what I've been told. If you're using an easy, boring option that works, it's on you. It's not the game's fault for being unbalanced. That's what I've heard. I don't agree with that, but I'm curious what the difference is here. Setting aside the other things that make DMC too bad, just talking about the stylish combo-based gameplay. It seems like DMC2 is the shining example of what I've been talking about. Because I've seen DMC2 combo videos, you can do some pretty cool stylish stuff, especially with the extended air juggles and aerial gunshots. You've got all these ways to customize your devil trigger using guns and grounded combo strings. You can have fun in DMC2. You can experiment and find crazy fun combo juggles and stylish ways to kill all the enemies in the room. If you choose to. So what's the difference? Is it not the player's fault for thinking DMC2 is boring if they play it in a boring way? What's the difference between DMC2 and DMC5, a game I like very much, but where I got a lot of pushback for saying the first playthrough starting difficulty was way too easy to pass by mindlessly mashing? I heard over and over that I don't understand DMC, that the point of the game is to be stylish, not to be challenged. It was apparently my fault for playing in a boring way, even though it was incredibly effective since the game was so damn easy. I'm not complaining about hypocrisy here, I'm just genuinely curious why it's okay for DMC5 and Bayonetta and Ultra Kill's first act to be largely passable using terrible mashy spammy gameplay, and it's my fault for being bored because I'm supposed to be paying attention to the style meter or ranking system or whatever. But in DMC2, it's also very easy to pass using terrible, mashy, spammy gameplay. And people consider the combat to be boring and bad, even though you can still do flashy, stylish combos you want to be doing in a DMC game. There's a ranking system at the end of every level, there's a style meter, and surely trying to maintain them as high as possible equals playing faster. So why isn't it the player's fault for finding DMC2 boring? It's a serious question, I'm not trying to start a fight here guys, I know there's a fundamental philosophical disagreement between myself and the style meter fans, but this is not meant to be hostile. I just want to know what you personally think the difference is, and I invite you to comment below. 
I'll check out what people say, I just ask that everyone state their views calmly and respectfully. Moving on, there are some things I like about DMC2. All of the bosses look cool. They may be bad fights, but I like how they look. The ability to dodge with a single button feels a lot better to me, since having it tied to lock on in this game would be awful, considering how you almost never want to lock on because it messes with your combos. The wall running looks really cool, but it's absolutely useless. I only ever did it by accident when I was spamming roll to get through these spaces faster, which I think is a thing. The wall run makes me think of Ninja Gaiden and how useful it was there. Ah, Ninja Gaiden, that's a great game. Maybe the next half of this video should be about that. As I said before, I like the directional combo system despite it not working with lock-on, and I really don't mind the game not telling you about how they work, just like the delayed button combos of DMC1, which that game also didn't tell you about, it's really easy to just naturally stumble upon them in combat. You realize your character is doing something, and you don't know how you did it, so you can experiment to figure it out. I think that's fine. But these very small positives are far outweighed by the negatives. Maybe if DMC2 had another year of development it could have been saved? I'm done though. I really wanted to stick through to the end because its badness is kinda fascinating, but level 14 broke me. You're running through these giant empty streets trying to find four blue orbs so you can open a door, and I've gone in circles three times, passing the same respawning enemies every time, and then I just decided I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, so I'm done. DMC1 deserved a full video, I gave it nearly 20 minutes, but here, there's just not much more I want to talk about. DMC2 is without a doubt one of the worst major studio games I've ever played, maybe ever made, and I'd like to forget it immediately and just move on to DMC3, which I will be doing soon. See you in the next video.